You want to learn about computers? Well, you pick the right person to teach you. What I don't know about computers could fill, well, quite a big area, really. But I do know enough to put you on the road to computer literacy. Sounds impressive, computer literacy. Of course, it means you know just a little more than the next guy. Tell your friends you're literate, and they'll be on your doorstep day and night, wanting advice before you can say, that'll cost you. Computers can be baffling, and they often seem to have a mind of their own. How often have you heard someone say, stupid machine, or other words I can't repeat here? Well, computers are stupid. They don't know anything. They just sit there until you tell them what to do. A computer is just an electronic device that has been given instructions to process and store information. That's it. No more. Where it beats us in the brains department is in the humongous amount of information it can process quickly and store indefinitely. Before we get into that, I want to show you all the bits and bobs that make up your standard computer and how they all fit together. A computer is a collection of the sort of hardware you can see here, plus software programs put into the computer's memory to tell the hardware what to do. It works just like a factory, where you have me, the boss, telling you, the workers, what to do. If I give you good instructions, you'll understand and carry out the work the way I want it done. Right? Computers are the same. If given clear instructions, they'll provide the results you want. Usually, anyway. Here we have two types of computers. The office computer, sometimes called a desktop computer, because it sits on a desk, taking up lots of room. And the notebook, or laptop computer, which doesn't look at all like a notebook, but could easily fit on your lap, if that's where you want it. Both do the same job. It's just the computer designers have managed to make all the components in the big machine smaller, using magic. True. Here are their screens or monitors. The keyboards, the mouses. Yes, the plural of mouse is mouses. And the box or processing part of the computer. All are connected together. The keyboard and the mouse connect here, and the monitor fits here. Sometimes the connections are a little different to these, but you should be able to work them out if you need to. The monitor, keyboard and mouse are built into the notebook computer, which makes it much easier to carry from place to place. Both the office computer and its monitor need to be plugged into the electric power point and turned on before they will work. Did you know the number one reason for computers not working is that people haven't turned them on at the wall socket? That really is true. The notebook computer runs on batteries, but will need to be plugged in from time to time to recharge. Around two to four hours is the best you can expect out of a single battery charge. Other things, such as printers and headphones, can also be added to the computer if you need them. They plug in like this. The computer also has a CD-ROM or DVD player that lets you play movies and CD-ROMs. To open the CD-ROM DVD drive, simply press the button on the outside here, or here on the notebook. The slide tray opens, the CD is removed from its container and placed on a tray which you push gently to close. Some DVD CD-ROM drives are also burners that allow you to copy or burn information, pictures and video from the computers onto a disk. Why it's called a burner beats me. Probably something to do with the laser etching that happens in there to add the information to the CD-ROM or DVD. This is not something you need to know just yet. Let's stay with the basics for now. All connected? Now let's see how it works. 